Well, you screwer, back with you. Something very different today. Not doing the ADSM training today at the School of Underhand Conniving Nats and Backstabbery. I'm actually just outside the studio here of that very popular and um, successful television program, which is called Nigel's Wax with Fame. Many of you would have watched it. Uh, it's the one where Nigel gets on the, what he calls the amazing, great Australian people, he gets those on as guests, has a chat to them while he's chatting to them. Of course he constructs a life-like and life-size wax replica of that particular person. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing today. Look, I will come clean with the viewers uh, because I've already been very upfront with Nigel and Nigel's people when they contacted me at the School of Underhand Conniving Max uh, about doing the doing, you know, appearing as a guest on the show and I, I, I initially refused. Since then, uh, because of the um, Svengali type influence of Mr. Richard Pipe at Suck, uh, I've subsequently been forced to attend the training. Uh, if, if I don't, then, then I won't be allowed to complete the training, which is very close to completion for the six classroom students I have presently undertaking the ADSM training at the School of Underhand Conniving Nats and Backstabbery. So anyway, it might be a chance, I might be able to get a chance to um, promote the book. I don't know what he's going to ask me. Um, that was the other thing too, he wanted to have a chat. He, he wanted to have a pre-chat, you know, about, you know, which question to ask. And I said, no, I can't be, I can't be bothered. Let's just do it. Let's just do it, Cole. So let's do it. Hello, Nigel, back here with Nigel's Wax with Fame. Welcome to this week's episode. We've got a real treat for you with another great, amazing Australian. His name is You Screwer, and he is an icon in the world of ADSIMS, particularly in the field of ADSIM training, where he trains his introductory course for budding adsums at the School of Underhand Conniving Knacks and Backstabbery where he regularly takes in new students and turns them into accomplished adsums. You, in addition to this, he also has his elite training school for adsums which of course is known and very well known worldwide as Top Screw. This Top Screw Elite Training Academy for Adsums is worldwide recognized as the gold standard for producing Adsums of high quality. If you see if you see a person, whether they be in private enterprise, whether they be in government, or whether they be maybe just in charge of a group of people uh, in a social club or something and you think that person is an absolute dickhead uh, that person in charge of course um, then it's a very good chance that you has trained that person to be that adson that they are if the person if you note that they are really uh, They've really got a high, an absolute high degree of absolute dick energy. Then there's every chance that they've graduated from U's elite training academy known as Top Screw. You courts controversy wherever and wherever he goes with his unorthodox yet evidently very effective training methods. You was the first one in the land of Adsum training to introduce the Barnes versus Elias concepts, to introduce, to introduce each Adsum developing a sophisticated and at the same time very skillful signature walk that would make them stand out wherever they were being an absolute dickhead. 
supervisor or manager. The well-known, of course, acronym for that is, of course, ADSOM. You was the first one to introduce us to the Kilson kick down, kiss up pyramid. He was also gave us, he explained to us the Kilson very good boys vendetta incursion and how Gary Kilson had in fact flattened the curve on the number of very good boy inductees needing medical attention because of their ceremonial hazing practices. You was the first one to introduce us to the pretending to care principles of being an ADSOM uh, and, and basically dissecting uh, and analysing such pretending to care modules as Pulse and developing his own much superior pretending to care module known as Heartbeat, of course. I, I will come clean with you, of course. You is not an easy person to deal with. When my people contacted him and asked him to come on to Nigel's Wax with Fame, he initially refused. Um, but circumstances prevailed and he will be on the show, although he doesn't... He hasn't given me any real indication of his level of cooperation on the show. In fact, when I asked him to basically, if he could come and visit us at the studio, have a couple of hours of cups of tea, coffee and snacks, which I do with all the guests, get to know each other, basically go through the questions that we're, that we're going to ask on the show so that he could have ready-made answers. That's what I do with all the guests. That's just, that's just, I know we make it out as if they're coming in cold, but that doesn't happen. That wouldn't make very good television at all, really, would it? I mean, if you, you know, if you think that these shows are just all, you know, just all come off the street and, you know, we just have a little chat and things like that, you know, well, you're being a bit naive, aren't we, sort of thing, you know, you, if you're that naive, you probably think that all those reality TV shows are actually reality and not, not scripted uh, and uh, edited and uh, highly produced as they actually are. Anyway, so we don't know really what to expect with you coming on. He's right outside at the moment. I've just been given the indication he's outside waiting. Um, but um, the thing is that, uh, well, look, he does have a reputation of being, you know, a, a bit of a wild man, sort of a bit of a hell-raising sort of past, you know, a bit of a, uh, you know, um, Richard Harris, Oliver Reed, um, you know, even, uh, you know, Russell Crowe type of character. Um, so I might actually start off with asking him about that. He's probably going to try and want to come on and plug the new book he has written and published. So I'll see how that goes. I won't let him just dictate the whole show and talk about his new book. We might as well tell you what his new book is here. Here is his new book that he's written, and it's called, it's, it's by you, Screw. He's written and published it himself, and it's called Way of the Ansom, 30 Years of Signature Walking. Okay, well, let's yeah, let you into the studio. I've got the wax warming up behind there on the screen where I make the wax replicas of the guests such as you and let's let's get you screw in here now yes come in you you screw sit yourself down right there hello hello Nigel hey, thanks for having me on the show. Hello you, welcome to Nigel's Wax with Fame. Yeah, well, I'm, I bet you I'm the only 
person that um, you've referred to uh, in first name and surname and said, you know, sit yourself down, you screw her kind of thing. You didn't do that with, say, Jack Thompson, called him Jack, Todd Samuelson, called Todd, Ray Martin, Ray. Um, the only other one besides me would be Father Bob, because that, but uh, he, he is known as Father Bob. If you just said Bob, there'd be four other people in the room turn around and go, what, me? If you called him Father Bob, he'd turn around. Yeah, so, so you're just making a bit of fun of my name. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yes, no, you know, we're not, not here to talk at length about your name. Let, let's just let that go. Let that go. Just relax, you. Just relax. I like my guests to be relaxed. You don't come across as the most relaxed type of person. You come across as a fairly intense sort of person. A fairly intense sort of person, probably right there. Now, one thing I will, I will ask you, you, as it's about this, it's about this reputation that you had previously as a bit of a wild man type hellraiser type of, of person. Do you, do you uh, think that it uh, affected, how did it affect your professional life? Well, mm, uh, did it hold you back? Do you think it hold you back at all? This how raising now. Uh, no. Well, there you have it. Well, now you, I'm not going to fall for your ruse. Yes, yes, I'm not going to fall. Well, I, I, maybe not such a ruse as a, as a tactic, as a tactic, as a tactic. Yes, look, I have watched, I have done some research, I have watched several of your Add Some Lessons, which are posted online were you doing the add some training at the school of underhand conniving knacks and backstabbery uh and a recent one you recent one i saw was called lessons and sins of the fathers and in that you you were showing the stalling type tactics where you people don't want to answer questions and you do exactly what you are doing now and I know that one is called that you're doing now it's called a Henry Tupper time hellraiser tactic you're doing with the pipe yes you're doing with the pipe and then it's it's a one and then after this you're probably going to just try and father stone father stone me the questions yes you know you you know you 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 know what I'm talking about, you, you do. Yes, you, yeah. So, anyway, I'm not going to stand for it. Now, there is an, another, we've done a bit of research and I have found out that you have a collection, or you're a collection, you are sort of a collector of shovels. Well, if not a collector, you do have several shovels at home. You do have several shovels at home and Yes, we've got a picture up of them now. And I'd just like to ask you, which of these shovels, and we'll get that picture up now, which of these shovels would you say is your favorite? Where did you get those photos of those shovels? That's, that's the place I live. They are my shovels. What? And, and which of your shovels would you say is, is the best one that to use? The best one to use. Look, I'm not here to talk about my bloody shovels. I don't really, I don't really care which shovel is best. I want to talk about this, or I'm gonna father. I'm gonna just start father stoning and going, mm, no, mm, I'm all right, you know. I'm gonna stone it. 
Well, yeah, we're going to keep on talking shovels. We can keep on until the end of the show, right? I've, um, if you, and that's what we're going to do. If you were going to try and father stone me or do that thing, you, stalling thing you do with the pipe. So, um... You very, yeah. You're very clever of you. Not. Okay, okay, okay. True say? Oh, we, 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 we ask me some questions and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them, okay? And, and we can talk a bit about the book if we get time. I, I you know, got the wax off started and I, I shall be going back and forwards like this, you, and coming out and asking you questions. And then I'll go back, you know, do some more waxing, come out and ask you questions. Just, just let you know, just to make you feel comfortable. You know, just like that, just like that, you know. Uh, right. Um, now you, you had a few issues with coming on the show, did you not? Did you want to explain, explain to the viewers some of your reservations about coming on the show? Yes, you. I'm very, I'm very busy um, trying to finish off the, um, this current uh, crop of students uh, to get them through the, my trading course at SAC. It's close to the end. Um, but there's still a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm also preparing um, for the next intake of um, students at the elite training school, Top Screw, which I do conduct with my esteemed colleague, Ms. Serendipity Ubiquity. Um, the other reason is to, I, I have watched some of your shows, Nigel, and you know, they're a little bit yeah, they're a little bit kiss-uppy kind of thing, you know. And I mean, I know that's coming from you, Screw, who does teach Adsoms, you know, how to how to kiss up effectively. But um, you know, and you know, you like, you know, and, and and some of the people you have on, like you say, you know, great, amazing Australians. Um, well, well, let's let's get it out of, get it right out of the picture right away. I mean, I'm I do not regard myself as a as a great, amazing Australian. I. Oh, Look, I train Adsoms. That's what I do. You know, I mean, um, you know that. You know, is 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 that good for? You know, is it good for people? Is it good for the? Um, good for the. You know, the country. I. You know, we we could have a whole. Analysis of of that sort of thing, but I I, I would definitely not regard myself as a great amazing Australian. Um, and you know, and, and there's some of the people that I've seen come on your show. I, 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 I would, in my humble opinion, I would say that um, some of them are not great Australians, and, and as I say, your, your, your lines of questionings um, is is all a bit kiss uppy to me, sort of thing. I'd like to re, you know, hear sort of ask you know a few few tougher, few tougher questions. Um, yeah, well, well, we'll see what you're going to ask, but um, anyway. Um, Oh, and, and, and before, for example, ask a tough question. I saw you had you had Alan Jones come on your show, and like he, you know, his whole reputation, he gets completely stuck into people who he um, ha ha takes issue with on his uh, broad broadcasts, um, uh, broadcasting on, on on radio, and I don't see too much of of his television uh, broadcast, but I imagine it's. It's in sort of similar, if probably a little bit more strained vein for television. Uh, so I, I don't see you ask him any tough questions. Well, that was pretty well. I, I thought that was a token question asking about the chuff bag sort of thing. And it, 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 numerous people have asked him that one, and he's and he's basically just parried it off very easily like he did with you by just saying, you know, that was just a heat of the moment thing, and, you know, and, well, you know, if, if he had his time over again, you know, just consider rephrasing what he said sort of thing. But I thought that was pretty, um, yeah, I, I thought that you're, you know, from what I saw, I, I didn't didn't stop and, and watch you complete the whole show, but it looked a bit, you know, you just looked to be kissing up to him. Um, and um, yeah, well, yeah, okay, yeah, it's TV, I know, and you've got to get people on, and you've got to get them up on under certain conditions, right? And 
you know, I, I do understand that there would have been, there would have actually been, uh, like there is for, is for everyone except me, that there's a, a few hours that you get together beforehand, and, and and even with his people and your people, you know, this question's in, this question's out, this is in, you can talk about this, you can talk about that. Yeah, I sort of get that, but I thought, yeah, that particularly with, with Alan, that you had a chance to sort of, you know, maybe just for a change, you know, just sort of dish it up to him like he's dished up to many a person. I mean, I'm not saying that every person he, he has dished it up to ha hasn't been deserved of it, uh, sort of thing, but I'm just reflecting. This is my reflections. Um, no, I didn't watch the end of the show. Um, have you still got, um, have you still got Alan's statue here, have you? Um, the wax, yeah, the wax replica you make. Have you still got it here? Well, you, if you had have cared to watch right to the end of the show, you would have seen the wax replica that I made of Mr. Alan Jones, and you may not be so quick to judge Nigel. Yes, I have got it. I've got it out the back. All the wax replicas remain the property of the production company which produces Nigel's Wax with Fame. The, the guests, including yourself, you can commission me to do another replica. I do the replica from the replica and, um, and then you can purchase that from the production company. But if it's not too much trouble, it's in the, in the back room. It's okay, yep, 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 show it to me have the one I made of Mr. Alan Jones out the back, so I'll just get it for you so that you can have a look at it. I'll just... That's the wax replica I made of Alan Jones. Oh, it's nothing but a big tool. Nothing but a big, big tool. And yes, it is. Well, I thought that under the circumstances, that was that was warranted. Um, so I'm going to put that back. That should have put your mind at ease. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe there is there is more to you than meets the eye, Nigel. Um, mind you, if if we do meet again I sort of might hope that you maybe shirt up a bit fella you know kind of you know, look a bit bare there um, yeah I know some of your story but if you you know I, I would be I would be quite keen to, to hear it you know straight from um, the horse's mouth so to speak um, I know that I'm not saying you look like a horse at all. I look, funny enough, I did actually see a uh, charity day or something and uh, you and some other, some other uh, comedian, because I know you used to do stand up as well. Um, you and this other comedian basically got inside, you, you had one of those cow suits where, uh, you know, one person takes the front and one person takes the back. So the, the person at the front's got the two legs and the head and the person at the back is, the front two legs and head the person in the back has, has got the cow's two rear legs uh, rump and tail sort of thing yeah and uh, I did see I did see you two having a bit of an argument before because he was supposed to actually uh, be the rump and tail sort of thing and you were supposed to be the head but you um, the last moment you switched it around you switched it around and so you became the the cow's backside sort of thing and he, he had to take the head uh, and you insisted on it um, yeah, you were, you you really were an asshole that day, Nigel. You you really were an asshole. So, um, well, look, regards to me not wearing a shirt, that's a bit insensitive, you, because I'm sure if if you'd done a bit of research on me, just like I've done my research on you, you, then you would know that I wear these particular clothes and, and a necklace um, be, be, as a tribute to my beloved Hillary who you know the story about us growing up on that 
tropical island together after both our parents were lost at sea in a shipwreck. We stayed on that, uh, we stayed on that island and then at a respectable adolescent age we ma fell madly in love with one another. Sadly, sadly as you, you know, uh, one, one day while my beloved Hillary was resting in the cool and the cool of the shade of the trees, I was down by the sea and I was practicing I was practicing my diving and I was also practicing what I knew as my my walking style. But since watching your videos and watching your you screw up training videos you I now know it to be my signature walk. So there I was up on the rocks with the sea on one side and the lagoon on another side and I was practicing what you call signature walking. I was practicing my walking so I could go back and impress my beloved Hillary and with her ravishing brown eyes and her cute smile. Anyway, when I was practicing my signature walking, my left hand foot came in contact with a loose rock. I fell and I fell down into the water, my impact rendering me unconscious. Uh, apparently I was rescued out, I drifted out to sea and, and I was rescued by a passing freight carrying boat. It took me three days to regain consciousness and by that time I begged them to go back for my Hillary but they said that they were almost at their destination and they had no no fuel to go back and they said that as they picked me up out at sea they did not even know where this island was. Sadly by the time I had got myself established and, and, and had gained some funds to basically commission a rescue mission to go out and search that area there with the help of some expert maritime persons. Sadly when we found the island Hillary was no longer on that island. I searched for her. I searched for her for years, going place to place, within country to country, never ever really finding her. One day, one day, sadly, sa sadly, we were at the same restaurant at the same time, but I did not know who she was there. She was there, and, and, and still as I know it to this day, she may with this man who I only know as Nick. And I know he was some kind of pop or folk singer. And he was at the restaurant at the same time because he did. He, she apparently was waiting outside, my beloved Hillary. He went up to the jukebox, he put a dime in there. And then he sang, I thought it was a, quite a silly song, but it did rock out a bit. And, and he did an even sillier dance on a rug. And I realised at that particular time, I had this realisation that no, no, I already knew how much I loved my beloved Hillary. But I realised then that I was in love with rock and roll as well. And I felt like it was like a put another dime in the jukebox baby moment. Sadly, that, sadly I had no idea. I only heard later of her presence there. So I continued my search for a place to place, island to island, to finally I stumbled upon at a windswept, cold, small island off the Irish coast. I stumbled on these free priests living, living in this presbytery house with the housekeeper who was kind, if a little, sometimes erratic um, and irrational. And she kindly kept us in hot cups of tea and many sandwiches. One of the older priests there who was confined mostly with a chair and had a very limited vocabulary, uh, he produced these enormous mouths of earwax which they had to syringe out of his ears and the priests even though that they were using it for candles and selling some of the candles, had enormous, over the years, enormous amount of wax that they'd used, they had stored in rooms in this house. 
I started mucking around, molding the wax, and I realized that I had this talent for making wax. I made wax replicas of the free priests and their kindly housekeeper and all the, the visitors and passers-by to the area. I, um, I, I even made, I even, even Sinead O'Connor once uh, visited us and we, I made a wax replica of Sinead. Uh, who else we had? I uh, think it was uh, Donald O'Donnell. Uh, visited, I made a replica of him. So that's where I started doing this replica, and I've been making wax replicas of people ever since, and it has been kind of therapeutic, and has given me, has given me some distraction from finding my beloved Hillary, although I probably will still continue to search for her. So that explains that to Nick. So I think you're being a little bit insensitive to me to tell me to shirt up, Mr. Screwer. Yes. Um, yes. Well, you, I'm just about, I'm just about the stage where, you know, I, I just need to, you know, maybe half an hour to sort of finish off Finish off, you know, the finer, finer details of your wax replica, and um, um, and while you go out uh, and walk around the, and, and take in the the sights around the, the studio here, um, I'll um, uh, I'll finish I'll finish off. You, yeah, no, Nigel, I'm not going anywhere. I I have seen that on your show. I've seen it on your show where you basically say, yeah, just go for a walk around the block for half an hour and come back and I'll, f I'll, 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 I'll finish off your, your wax replica of yourself, yeah, your life-size wax replica. Well, well, how do, how do they know? How do they know? That they're, they're taking a walk around the block for half an hour or going and get a cup of coffee or something. How do they know? Because that screen there, you can't really see what you've done. How do people know that you don't just get other artists in to finish off the wax thing? They might be doing most of the work, in fact, in that half hour. You might get several people in. And then they come back and you oh, look, I've finished this and I've done this for you. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm staying here. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, we, we can shut up and we can cut this bit out while you go and work away for half an hour but the thing is what we're going to do is when you show me that finished wax dummy right so this is what people know that's going out i will i will explain the words nigel did that all himself so for people watching this at home if i don't say Nigel did that all himself. You know that Nigel is a bit of a fake. That you're a bit of a fraud, Nigel, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so that's that's what we'll do. So um yep, yeah, I'll just sit here. Um Yeah, don't let me don't let me stop you from finishing off the wax replica. You you you're not going to go anywhere. Well, you are being quite difficult, you. You are being quite a screwer. That, that is the format of the show. Everybody else complies with it. Mm, yes, you say nobody screws with you. Yes, that is a bit predictable, but oh, well, you, you just sit there. I will, I will go back here and I'll work away behind the screen for half an hour. No, I know you can't come around and look. And, and that is pure, I'll prove to you that is pure fiction, pure fiction that I basically tell people to go away so that I can get other people in to actually finish off the wax replicas. I'll prove it to you and yes you can say those words and that will prove to all the viewers of this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just be quiet back there you because I want complete, uh, I, I, I want to work uh, in complete science for half an hour because otherwise it'll take longer to get the job done. Okay.
Yes, you. I have now finished your wax replica and Yes, you, I've now finished your wax replica and you've been here the whole time, the whole time, so um, I don't think that uh, we need for you to say that it was, it was all his work. It, it was all my work. I've slaved away for the last half hour working on your wax replica. Thanks for being quiet because I really needed to pay attention to get those finer details done, especially around your nose. I have to get your crooked nose right and your beady eyes and the bags under your eyes as well. So, um, you, um, anyway, it's all my own work on Nigel's Wax of Fame. Thank you for watching. What do you think? Uh, I'll bring out your wax replica from behind the screen you i will ask you to just bear me the courtesy of closing your eyes while i bring it out no 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 you stay where you are it's not heavy remember they're wax so i'll bring it out i'll bring it out myself and then you can assess it and how but I, I i hope it's i hope it's done justice to the iconic you screw up so just stay there you and close your eyes and i'll bring out your wax replica Okay, okay, let's have a look. Well, you've, you've put me, it, you know, it bears some resemblance to me, of course, you know, it's the right size and, and everything, got my body's, body size, body shape right, um, head's about right, but, you know, why have you got me wearing a suit, you know, like, why, why, why can you just did me in, say, these clothes or a pair of shorts or something, you know, you know, and you could have put me, you know, why couldn't I be, you know, Stepping out into one of you know one of my signature walk strides or or, or a stance you know a, you know a signature stance or something like that and. I mean, sort of looking at a book, you know, and I've got glasses on. What what what's what's all that about? I'm not I'm not real. I'm not really fussed on it at all, Nigel. You know, it's it's it, it's not really capturing. I don't think the essence of you, you, you screw up, um, which I thought, well, that's what, you, that's what you're trying to do. That's what you rave on with all that other people that I've watched is, you know, and they go, oh, you've got, oh, I've got, you've got, you've captured my essence, you know, you've captured that and that, you know, I, I don't think you've really captured me there, Nigel, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah, it is, it is my book, I mean, it is my book and, 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 and I do thank you for plugging my book and letting me have a little bit of a plug of my book on your show but it's not it's not really what I was um, it's not what I hoped hoped it would be um, but yeah good marks for effort though yeah I'll give you that um. well anyway comes to that part of the show where the, the both the guest and Nigel you know you know wax on about you know how enjoyable it's being on the show and and all that you know for being enjoyable for me being enjoyable for him blah 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 so uh, look look I I enjoy I enjoy being on the show uh, a lot more than I, I thought I was I didn't enjoy it that much but much more than I thought I would. As I said, I, I was going to basically come along and just sort of stonewall the questions using, you know, maybe some Father Stone or, or what I was using initially was using that uh, Henry type of time Hellraiser thing with the pipe, you know, to, um, you know, eff effectively just stonewall the questions, uh, not answer them. Uh, but um, I. <coughs> 
Yeah, well, I, I, I do, I do grudgingly like how Nigel um, managed somehow to get get hold of some photos or video video footage of my shovels at uh, where I live, and um, he's going to talk about shovels for the whole show. Ask me questions about shovels unless I started playing ball with him and answer some of the questions. So I, you know, that's if you're watching this on the playback, Nigel, that I've got a dirty pearl old man, but. Uh, I like it. <laughs> I mean, I, I am your, scr your screwer after all. I just thought that was pretty good. Uh, I, I do have a lot more respect for uh, Nigel since coming on the show. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, he seems, you know, when, when you see him on the show, you know, he seems to have this, the way he's dressed, he seems to have this sort of weird, you know, Blue Lagoon type trip going on sort of thing. But, you know, after he explaining to me, you know, about what's, you know the the you know the, the events that have happened in his life. He's had quite a life of it, that's for sure. Uh, and I, I have actually spoken to um, my esteemed colleague, Miss Serendipity Ubiquity, uh, because of her the, the extent of contact she's in contacts in many fields, including the entertainment field. And uh, she's already sort of started to put in motion some uh, inquiries to see if we can uh, track down this man Nick who um, Nigel's uh, Hillary um, uh, uh, was was last last traveling with so I, I do hope that something transpires positively out of that for for Nigel uh, I did um, I probably hastily a bit hastily uh, accused him you know of doing a big kissing up job on Alan Jones, but uh, it seems on, um, from what he showed me, from the, from what he produced on that show, what how Nigel handled it in the end was that he seemed to have actually taken um, Mr. Jones down a peg or two. Uh, so, yeah, I had more respect for him. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind meeting, meeting Nigel again. Uh, so, uh, in summary, yeah, I think I think Nigel's a nice boy, and I think he loves to speak, and he loves to be spoken to. I just hope that Nigel is happy in his world. So anyway, look, I'd just like to stay and chat on about this, but uh, the old clock on my phone <laughs> says that there's only oh, 37 minutes to go till. Anyway. Um, be good. Now we have come to the end of our show. I have put the wax replica of Mr. You Screw in temporary storage. All of my wax replicas are then transported after each show to a secure, fireproof, locked down area. Uh, where they are stored for prosperity. I was not very impressed with Mr. Yu Screwer's critique of my wax replica of himself, given the amount of effort I put into uh, coming up with such a detailed copy of Mr. Yu Screwer. But I guess that is just him. He seemed to live up to his name and reputation in that he was a real screwer. He was difficult with a capital D and sometimes painful with a big P. Um, but nevertheless, I do have some grudging respect for Mr. You Screwer, uh, he has he has agreed to enlist the uh, the talents and abilities of his esteemed colleague, Ms. Serendipity Ubiquity, who has many contacts in the entertainment industry and she is going to try and help me to find this man Nick as in 
the Knights Hussein Nick and that will hopefully lead to me finding my beloved Hillary once again. So I do have respect for him uh, and so also I have respect for the way that he sees the world like I see with Mr. say Donald Trump where you have said well he takes all the boxes of having the uh, uh, traits of being a uh, very successful adsum but you screw says that Mr. Trump's signature walk is very weak and it was not one it was not a signature walk of sufficient standard to either, even pass through the early stages of Mr. Yu Screwer's add some training at suck. Only Mr. Yu Screwer, I think, could see the world in that way, which is quite ironic that he finds Mr. Trump's signature walk very weak, given that Mr. Trump, everything uh, wet, he tries to always give this impression of strength no matter what um, and yet here is Mr. Hughes Screw, the most um, renowned trainer of Adsoms uh, in, the, in, in certainly in the English speaking world and he's described his signature walk as a very weak one. Okay so I'm not sure. I'm probably going to. Um, I'm probably going to stop doing the waxing just for a certain amount of time and put more efforts into finding my beloved Hillary, uh, pending what information can be gleaned from the knowledge and contacts of serendipity, ubiquity. So, Nigel, waxing off. For quite a while, I would think now. Goodbye. Ooh, that's nice.